Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? So, yep, that's the title. That's the title. 32nd Degree Freemason comes to Flat Earth Biblical Earther Meetup in Chattanooga. So this was this past Saturday. Um, we were up, we went first to the Lookout Mountain, which was really cool because you can see like seven different states from there. And different states from there. And that was pretty neat. It was a very clear day, so we got some great, great pictures. And uh, and uh, I've got a I've got a video that I'll be releasing hopefully sometime within the next week. I'm waiting for another video from a friend who was there, so that I can add that to the video. And after we went to Lookout Mountain, we went to another place. What's up, guys? How you doing? Awaken for Jesus, Nordy K. What's up? We went out to eat. Please stop, man. Stop. Okay, okay, hold up. One second, guys. Stop, man. Stop. Okay, okay, hold up. One second, guys. Stop. One second. <laughs> oh, sorry guys. <clears throat> All right. So, let's see here. I see some comments in here. What's going on? Hey, Simon. Truth Finder. What's up, Electric Tides? Amy. Hey, what's going on? Reynaldo. Hello. Raymond. What's going on? Okay, just saying hi, saying hi. Hey, Plesso Platus. What's up, man? Yeah, me too. Okay, so this is this is just so cool, guys. So we're at the Flat Earth. Hey, Jason. What's up, D-Russ? We're at the Flat Earth Meetup in Chattanooga. Thank, a big shout-out to Simon Bean for coordinate, coordinating that. Hey, what's up, Mark? Hey, Stephen Kennedy. And... Uh, so it goes amazing. In fact, I was debating, I was debating as to whether or not I should even go because we were just so, so tired. Because uh, we just been traveling nonstop, and so I wasn't sure if we'd make it. But we went, and uh, <laughs> we were planning on leaving at seven thirty p.m. because it's about a three-hour drive back, three and a half hour drive back from Chattanooga to where we live. And uh, we ended up not leaving until I think it was 10, 10 p.m. The restaurant closed at 8 p.m. And so we were in the parking lot just conversing with people, which was amazing, for another two hours after we ended the official meetup. And uh, it was interesting because there was actually two different people there who, who either were, are in the occult or who had come out of the occult. And... Um, one of, one of the guys who's out of the occult now, he was in there for 30 years, and he came out of it. And actually, he just recently, along with another friend of his, they, they got kicked out of their church because of uh, their biblical earthers. Their biblical earthers, they got kicked out of their church, and he was formerly in the occult, and he's no longer in the occult. He had actually a really interesting story. I'll share that with you first before I get to the, to the Freemason who's 32nd degree. So this guy who was in the occult for 30 years, he told me this one story because I had asked him, you know, while you were in the occult, did you ever try to do any spell casting on any Christians? And he said, no, I, I knew better not to cross to, than to cross that line. But uh, he said that there was one time because he always would wear a Baphomet um, necklace that he decided to overlay a cross over top of it and when he did that, he said that he couldn't, there was a burning sensation on his chest that only went away when he immediately removed the cross from overlaying on the Baphomet. That's wild. Is that not wild? That's wild. I, I think that's wild. But, uh, you know, maybe not everyone's going to have that, uh, that same experience, but I think for him, because, because he was so deep into witchcraft and whatnot, that that was one of the ways that, that God spoke to him 
was to show him, you know, the stuff that you're messing with, um, you know, my power is greater than yours, right? So I thought that was pretty wild. Um, I know, right? Dang, a 32nd degree Mason and Elon Musk nephew in the same... Yeah, it's... Guys, it is wild. It is super wild. Nathan, kids got taken away because the mom believes in flat earth. This is from Amy. I'll have to hear about that. I, that's the first I've heard that, but... Um, anyways, so th that was an interesting story that, that one guy shared with me. Now, this other guy, he shared with me, he's a 32nd degree Mason, Freemason, and he's been teaching people for a long time, apparently, in the Blue Lodge, okay? And he's, he's a, he's a biblical earther. I'm going to start saying that. I'm, I'm moving away from the terminology of flat earther to biblical earther. I'm going to do another video on that because I just think that it's more appropriate uh, Shade Stone, he, he gave me a good, a really good, um, good reason as to why. Hey, John Adams, how you doing? So, anyway, so this Freemason, 32nd degree Freemason, he didn't, he didn't realize to me, or rather he didn't relay this information to me until he saw a Bible that I had with me. Um, so my mom, she received a box full of Bibles, okay? A box full of Bibles. It was just given to her. And lo and, lo and behold, there is a Master's Reference Edition, Freemason's Master's Reference Edition that has a print date of 1971 in there. And so she's got it, and she knows what I research, so... I asked her if I could have it, and I got it because I think it's, it shows that a lot of people who are skeptical as to whether or not they believe in this stuff, like believe that the occult actually exists, and uh, it's, a, it's a proof, right? It's one proof to show that this is a real, this is a real occult, and uh, all their doctrines, a lot of their doctrines, not all of them, but many of their doctrines are published at the very front of the Bible. And so anyone can go check to see their terms and their... Um, their doctrines, they have commonly asked questions and they give their answers to them, and they do not line up with a real spiritual understanding with a, if you're a born-again believer, it's not the same concept of understanding scriptures at all. Um, so anyways, he saw that, because I had it with me, and then he opened up and said, hey, I have a Bible like that. And I was like, oh, really? That's interesting. He said, yeah, because I'm a 32nd degree Freemason. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Hmm. And he's wearing a flat earth shirt, and he was in the meetup with us the whole time. And I think he was a little concerned about how, how I would respond or how others may respond to him when he came out with that, uh, came out with that truth. So... Um, it's just wild because I think right now he's at a point where he's trying to figure out, you know, has he been duped this whole time or not? Because, you know, they, they mix Christ and Lucifer to be like the same. And um, we know that they're different people. We know that they're different. They're different entities completely. They're, they're not to be minced. They're not to be combined or merged. So... Uh, Anyways, he, he was revealing to me some things and saying a lot of things, but every single time he said something, trying to trying to prove, and he may even be watching this right now, so uh, I'm not here to like bash him at all. I think it's tremendous that he came out and even opened up in that manner. And I asked him, "Are you still practicing Freemasonry?" And he said, uh, "He said, yeah, but I'm not sure if I'm going to renew my dues or not." And I said, okay, so it sounds like he's at least questioning whether or not he should continue on in, in the occult. Um, in fact, he's like, ex he's like super, super active in biblical cosmology. In fact, he says that he helps to, <laughs> goes out on to celebrate truth, and he like comments a lot to combat, you know, trolls and people who were having questions about biblical cosmology because he's excited about it. In fact, he purchased uh, three three t-shirts of my Bible says flat earth t-shirts, three of them for his children. So I went ahead and gave him another one just for him to have. 
And so, I mean, the guy is totally legit as far as being excited for God's truth as it, as it pertains to cosmology. But at, at the same time, he also, um, it's, it's like his thirst for knowledge is at least, and I think this isn't just him, but it, this can have, this anyone can fall victim to this, but uh, to have a thirst for knowledge more so than a, than a thirst for a relationship with our creator, that's where I think a lot of Freemasons get caught and they get trapped because they're always seeking that new enlightenment, that new level of light, right? But they can never get it because it's like you're always going up the ladder. There's another ladder. There's another, there's another rung. There's another step to take. You can never achieve that very, that very top rung because it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't exist. You, it never, you just, you're always working. You're always working to achieve this ultimate enlightenment. And so he's 32nd degree, and I, I really think that God's calling this guy out, obviously. I mean, he shows up, and he testifies about what he's been doing, and he's, he's obviously a little concerned to see what we think about him when he reveals. But So I praise the Lord that he saw the Masonic Bible that I had with me because it helped him to open up. Um, anyways, I want to read this from you guys. This is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Um, and I'm going to read three. So second Timothy chapter three, verses one through seven. Okay. It says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort of are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. For me, that's where I see Freemasonry. They get caught up in this. Is this is this is Second Timothy, chapter three, verse seven. It says, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. What is truth? Right? What's truth? I mean, it's pretty interesting for, for this guy because he's been able to see how the symbology of the Freemasonry symbols and stuff, how it all connects and shows and reveals a stationary and flat earth with a dome over our head. And that's pretty neat, but if that's all someone knows, and they don't actually know the Creator, if I had to make a choice to either know, you know, that, like, to definitively know the doctrine of biblical cosmology versus actually just knowing the Creator, because for some, for whatever reason, God doesn't give me the revelation in my lifetime that I don't understand that we're living on a stationary and flat Earth. You better be sure that. I believe it is way more important that a person knows for sure that they know who the Creator is. And that is Jesus Christ. He, he was the Word. He manifested our creation by God's mouth, the Father. So, um, anyways, you know, again, this is always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth. Who is the knowledge of the truth? What's truth? Right? Truth, John 14, 6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth. Who said that? Jesus. He said, I am the truth. Over here it says in 2 Timothy verse three, or chapter 3, verse 7, it says, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's what a lot of Freemasons, that's where they are. They're always learning, always taking another step, learning some new piece of information, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is not the light bearer, Lucifer. That is not the knowledge of the truth. 
the truth is right here. It says, John, this is John 14, 6. It says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth. Right there, he said, I am the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. It doesn't say, I am, um, I am the flat earth. And no one comes to the Father except through me. It doesn't say that. It, it just says, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And, and so I think it's important that uh, this is, this is pretty wild guys. Cause it, what's funny is I told him, I said, I think God's calling you out that you're going to have to, you know, proclaim his truth. God's obviously given you, um, this understanding and this knowledge that you're going to have to repent of your sin and believe in Jesus Christ and do not suppress the truth. And he said, yeah, yeah, I know. And I was like, okay, well, so, you know, and then I revealed to him, you know, in Freemason Lodge, this is going to be very controversial because, and you think about the churches, right? I told him, look, the churches, a lot of them, they have um, leadership, which is uh, involves people who are in the occult, whether they be deacons or trustees or the board of trustees or even the pastor. These people, a lot of them, they're involved in Freemasonry. And what this does this doctrine, um, the biblical cosmology, it exposes their satanic Luciferian worship. And so this is a doctrine that they are not going to welcome very much. And when I told him that, he said, oh, well, I, I don't know if I'm going to say that. And I said, that's exactly why I just said before you said that, that you can't suppress what you now know. And he was like, oh, so like God, and, and it's, it's just amazing, guys. God, every time he would say something, God would give me something to say back to him as a rebuttal. And this guy, he's older than me. He's older than me. He probably has a lot more experience, a lot, obviously a lot more experience, life experience than me. And he also has occult wisdom, occult knowledge. But yet every time he said something, Yah, Yahuwah gave me something, the Holy Spirit gave me something to counter what he had to say. And the best that I could see whenever he, how he responded and reacted was he was just like, hmm, hmm. You know, he didn't, he didn't really have much to, to rebuttal it too much. Um, so anyways, it, it was, it was really neat. It was really neat. So it was, uh, I'm very glad that he showed up. I'm glad that he, that he shared his testimony and I, I just pray that that guy will be used by Jesus Christ in a big way because there's so many, so many men in the occult who are so blinded by the search for truth yet never ever actually coming to know truth and truth is Jesus Christ. So I, I pray, I pray he comes to him and um, I'm so thankful that I got a chance to speak with him. Oh my gosh, there's so many incredible, hey guys. Can you calm down over there? Thanks. There's so many. There's so many. Um, there's so many uh, men who are trapped in that occult knowledge, and they truly believe. They truly believe that they're. Uh, they've got this internal knowledge. Oh, this was interesting. What is that verse? You know, it says, you know, do not cast, do not cast your pearls before swine. Right. That was one thing that he brought to me. And I said, you know, sometimes you don't know who the swine are because, because what, what uh, Jesus has called us to do is he has called us to go, go and, and preach the gospel to all the ends of the earth and uh, baptizing and make, making disciples and baptizing um, people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that's what we've been called to do. But we can't know who those people are going to be unless we preach the gospel, which we're called to do. And um, so I, I just, I encouraged him. I said, look, man, you know, it's, it's important that we do share the truth. And he said, well, but, you know, you don't cast your, cast your pearls before swine. And again, I, I understand what he's saying, but until you actually have a conversation with someone to start witnessing to them, you may not even know who the swine are, right? So, once you start preaching the gospel and if someone over here starts like just getting in your face and, and they're just really aggressive and ugly, right? 
Then you got a bunch of other people over here who are willing to listen to you. What, what might be the best thing, you know? Kind of turn away a little bit from that person who's, who's rejecting you completely and come on over here and preach to the people who want to listen and hear. So, um, so it's interesting, right? It's interesting. We, we got we to gotta have the Holy Spirit discernment, but that only comes through the Holy Spirit. And uh, He'll guide us in all truth. The guide us in spirit and, and in truth. So, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things where this occult knowledge it, it twists the truth. Not and, and 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 unfortunately, it claims victim to a lot of people who are really have I believe good intentions. And of course, Satan is he going to appear to be, um, you know, like right off the bat that he's just some evil entity? No, he's going to lure people in through a little bit of knowledge here, a little bit of knowledge there, and entice them. So eventually they forget what, you know, what their morals are, what truth even feels or looks like, because their mind has been completely changed, re unfortunately twisted, to see through a different lens that is not actually through the biblical perspective, which is taking the Bible actually in its context which this goes back again to the, the cosmology, right? So, um, yes, there's always a little mix of truth in there, but a lot of times, uh, even if you just got like one little thing off, you don't have a whole truth then. All right, so yeah, it's pretty exciting, guys. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how, if, if this guy will actually surrender to... Jesus Christ completely. I already, I already extended an offer to him to let him know that whenever he's ready to completely repent and turn from his sin and idolatry of, um, of the occult practices and turn from that and then believe completely on Jesus Christ that he has uh, an opportunity to share his witness and bear a witness on my channel here. So I'm hopeful that he'll take advantage of that. And of course, he's not going to be... Uh, He's not, he, he can't reveal certain things, obviously, because that'll jeopardize himself and his family, of which I would not even uh, ask him to do. I wasn't even asking him to do. But of the things in general that he can speak about and speak to and repent of publicly, that'll be huge. It'll be really huge for other Freemasons, especially, who are looking into biblical cosmology because that'll give them an idea Whoa, this guy right here? Yeah, this guy needs to go away because uh, hide user. Yeah, that's not true. That guy's gone. I saw that. I'm sure someone would have got to it eventually, but... Okay, so... Um, so that guy's witness, by bearing witness about how biblical cosmology has changed his understanding of what Freemasonry truly is, and after the number of years that he's been in there and how faithfully committed he's been to it by him turning away from it, not renewing his dues, and co completely following Jesus Christ, the truth, the real truth, that will be a radical testimony, and I, I hope that he'll share. But only, only uh, if Jesus allows to, I don't know, if, if Jesus will get a hold of this guy's heart, if this guy will actually surrender completely, then he can do that. But we shall see. So I hope so. All right. So that, that is, uh, for the most part, what I wanted to share with you guys. Um, uh, we, so I'm sure there's going to be more to come. But uh, I'll just I'll look at these comments real quick, see what's going on. Oh, something interesting. So, you know, I, I had posted a video about some footage that I got. Yeah, I pray he won't renew his dues as well. But for the very Angela, for at least he's even considering it, right? That's a big step for someone to even consider. You know what? He, for him to even say, you know, I don't know if I'm going to renew my dues. That's pretty incredible. Because I think what he told me was, he said, he said, after watching you, Nathan, he's talking to me, and Rob Skiba, he said, and I think also maybe probably uh, Robbie Davidson. Um, watching our channels and seeing how it's connecting to uh, the occult, how the spinning ball heliocentric model all 
points to occult worship. He's now questioning, he truly is questioning whether or not he's been going down the wrong path this whole time. So to me, wow, I'm getting getting holy, holy uh, spirit goosebumps. Um, it's pretty exciting. It's, it's really exciting to see how God's waking up people out of the occult and bringing and drawing him unto him. And I'm thankful that uh, we can be used in that manner in these last days. There's no doubt we're in the last days, guys. So we're so close to the end. Okay, okay, okay. Um, hmm. All right. Yeah, so I mean, that's, I guess I was kind of rambling on there. Sorry about that. Last three degrees of Freemasonry is when they, they're they taught all the secrets. But what's interesting is he's learning this secret. Uh, he's learning this secret before. Um, it's being revealed to him, which is really cool. Like, like they're not internally revealing the secret to him. He's finding it out through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. So that's really, really exciting. So that hopefully will give him, um, you know, some a fresh perspective to see that he doesn't have to go to the lodge. He doesn't have to go to a man, per se, to get truth. He can actually go to Jesus Christ, open up the Bible, read the words with the Holy Spirit guiding him so that he can understand what he's supposed to be doing, Right? And I think that's that's it's just incredible. Um, so, oh, I just I just saw this. Someone had put in here. Okay, so this Plasso Platus, Freemasonry comes from Jes from Jesuits. Okay, so Jesuits, right? I got this question today. I got this question. Someone asked me about the Preterist view, and I think that something about I don't know all the details, but. Um, Something about, you know, all prophecies, most if not all prophecies basically been fulfilled and it can be traced back to like 70 AD or something. So like maybe even Christ is already reigning right now and he's in control of the whole earth and he's not, you know, Satan's not ruling the air anymore. Uh, I looked into that a little bit. I just went on to Wikipedia. You know, I don't trust Wikipedia for everything, but I thought this was really telling. Wikipedia attributes... <laughs> The preter preterist view from a Jesuit. It came from a Jesuit. The first written expose of the preterist view came, stemmed from a Jesuit. So if that isn't enough to tell you that there's probably something wrong with the preterist view, preterism, preterist view, I don't know. You gotta you gotta look into that. It's pretty interesting. If it's coming from a Jesuit, right? You gotta start wondering, hmm, where is this really coming from? So, you know, we shouldn't begin our doctrines from straight up from just any man. We we really need to test the spirits, check check the holy inspired words, ask the Father through Jesus' name through Yeshua's name, through Yeshua's name, through Yahushua's name, to give us the truth that we need in order to understand certain things that we don't have understanding for. And he will do that when he is ready, right? But we have to stay, we have to stay, um, we have to continue to seek his word, right? Because this is what it says in John. It says John 8, if we go to John 8, 31 through 32, John 8, 31 through 32, it says this. Um, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So truth, which is Jesus, we already, we already learned that it's in John 14, 6. The truth we will know when we abide 
in the Word, which is John, 4, John 1, 14, Jesus is the Word who is full of truth and grace, then we can uh, know the truth and we can be made free. The truth will make us free. The thing that makes us free is not any um, allegiance to any lodge or to any, any uh, witchcraft or any secret, secret knowledge that's given to us by man, right? Um, the truth, it comes by Jesus Christ, and we can only know that through his word and through the guiding of the Holy Spirit, and that is what makes us free. Otherwise, by default, we are in bondage, right? So I'm sure that this will not be the only uh, Freemason encounter that I'll have in my travels. I'm sure that, that just like God's calling so many people out of, a, of this strong, a strong delusion to draw, him, draw, draw all men unto himself, which he's trying to do. He's trying to draw men to himself. There's going to be more. And so I pray that if people open up to you about you know, their past or things that they're, you know, things that they're, uh, they're involved with, that you would uh, show them some mercy and grace and encourage them, encourage them to, uh, to repent. And that means to turn away from their sin and turn to the holy God through Jesus Christ and believe on him, repent and believe. That's what is recorded Jesus saying this in Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 15. So please give a thumbs up to this video. I'd appreciate it. Uh, guys, do please share this with others if you don't mind, and subscribe if you've not yet done so. Um, and then we have Jesus took all, all, he gave us two new commands, right? He said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then love your neighbor as yourself. All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you for watching. Um, I love you guys. Take care. God bless.